I know there's a lot of people around the world that don't believe in a God creator. I never used to. But to cut a long story short, I was baptised in 1999. And here we are in the middle of 2020. I'm in New Zealand. Just come out of level 4 lockdown from COVID. I'm not here to try and convince people that we're a product of intelligent design. It's something you'll have to come to in your own way, in your own time. This is more of me just wanting to get out of me what's churning in me. I spend a lot of time studying the Bible and translating back to Hebrew and Greek to get a better understanding and a better context of what His Majesty has been trying to say. I think we overcomplicated it. Being loving one another doesn't really get any simpler than that. There's a lot of chatter around the world about the implementation of digital currencies and I know that there will be a lot of chatter amongst the believers about where we are about what the appropriate response for us should be A lot of endeavour and a billion and one different interpretations of what's going on and what is the mark of the beast. Um, what are the next events over the horizon? How should we prepare for those? The history of mankind has always been one of bullying, for want of a better word, of men that don't believe or choose not to follow His Majesty's path. So there's always been a struggle and Christ said that the poor will always be with us and it took me a long time to realise why that is but it's because there are men who don't believe and who understand but refuse to obey. I don't think that the mark of the beast is an RFID. I think it's a spiritually seen mark. I think the absence of the seal of the Holy Spirit, by definition, is the mark of the beast. The beast being a rebellious kingdom. His Majesty sent his son, his heir, Christ, into the world from Nazareth, and we know him as Jesus. I believe who I believe he is who he claimed he was. 
I believe he is who he claims he is. And I believe that he is the judge that I will have to give account of my life to. His message to us was the testimony of his father's kingdom, of his father's expectations with regards to how we conduct ourselves and the standard that he expects for those that he would open his arms and call us children and brothers and family members I think that's what we need to focus on His Majesty phrased it this way counseled us in Revelation to return back to our first roots, to our first love. And I think that's what we should always be doing. The greatest gift that we were given is our relationship with one another and our, our bond of family and our bond of friendship and honesty and truth and integrity. And treating each other justly and equitably His Majesty chose Israel as a people that would demonstrate to the world Just how good it can be when you're living in the favour of Almighty God. When you when you apply and let the truth of the simplicity of love one another. invade every fibre of your being. The records in the, in the Holy Bible show that that simple truth was um, fallen short of time and time again and consequently the rest of the world suffered Israel was set on fire and placed on a hill to be a light to the world and it failed in its mission the same mission was given to the entire world when, when Christ returned to his father's house in heaven the Holy Spirit was sent to guide us into all truth to empower us, to teach us to me I think that we need to focus on honouring the sacrifice that Jesus made for us 
by loving one another and letting the rest of the world see the quality of life and the happiness and the joy that is found in our Father's house. The enemy was running around forming weapons against us all the time and I think economics is probably the most influential, powerful and destructive weapon that he's ever implemented against us. Appealing to our greed, our selfishness, our pride, our desire for prestige and um, just recognition. But my father's house is about being humble, being content, being at peace. Throughout history, from the beginning, has been this false belief that being competitive is healthy and it brings out the worst in people uh, the cunning, the conniving, the scheming, the slandering, all to get ahead. In, a, in my day and age, we call it Darwinism, and it, it justifies bad behavior because there's no accountability and that it is all about survival of the fittest and acquiring money and assets and power and prestige and that's not it's just not the way our father's house is run Eternity is not going to be about sitting around. It's it's the beginning of. So I believe that there's one gift that God hasn't given to humanity yet, and that's the power to create in other dimensions. I think that He wishes to share that gift with us, and that will be something that we can do. in the heavenly kingdom. But I think we have to earn the right to wield that power, otherwise the destruction that would be reaped well, it would just be ugly, wouldn't it? So that's the that's the carrot for me, you know, I look forward to being able to so I'm a I'm a carpenter, I like, like you know, producing things out of wood and I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. But imagine being able to create things like his Majesty did like flowers and trees and, and colours and sounds and um, just everything that is the universe and the harmony that exists, you know, just the integration 
of such a complicated system. So trying to focus on the point at hand. Rather than worrying about a one world government and a one world currency and a global antichrist and living with anxiety about an accurate interpretation of Daniel's timelines and the absolute warnings in Revelation 13. I think the key to success is focusing on the love for one another amongst the believers in the house of our Father and using that as the mechanism to demonstrate God's kingdom to the world. I think people would be drawn to that light like moths. Actions speak louder than words. It's that simple. I don't think we should be having anything to do with usury and uh, interest. I think usury is a very appropriate title for what it is. Uh, seeking to prosper for someone else. Um, we, we need to get out of that game. We need to get debt free. We need to live, learn to live content, quiet, peaceful lives. And we need to really help those amongst our family that are struggling. Um, God granted man's gifts to form the articles of the tabernacle and the gifts that we have today were given to us for specific reasons individually for the purpose of building God's kingdom and we need to focus on the unity of the church. End of story. How blessed it is when brothers dwell in unity, for it's like the anointing oil running down the head of Aaron, down over his garments. There's just so much division and contention in the house of God. No, he didn't write letters to the Baptists in Wichita or the Calvinists in Winchester or the, the Presbyterians in Tokarai, you know, he, he wrote letters to the churches of each province. I don't think it's a coincidence that there were seven letters that cover the seven continents and the seven millenniums. A message to all people throughout all time. I've been to many congregations and I've seen the prosperity gospel alive and well and I've seen the same poor people attending regularly but never really making a connection and no one reaching out to help them. I think the book of Acts and the way that the believers
cared for one another and used the resources that they had been entrusted with to bless the members of their household and to help them lift their heads up and walk tall as members of God's house. And um, if I think if we focus on that mission, that'll be the, the mechanism by which we can avoid deception and honour our Father and the testimony of Christ. I don't think it's, you know, I've thought about the fact that Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead and meditated deeply about what it was that they were actually doing that had brought that about. And it was, they were, they were wanting the prestige and wanting to be a part of it. But the penny hadn't dropped in their heart, and the, God just couldn't allow their poison into his house. I think that the book of Acts and the way that the first group of believers conducted themselves is the pattern that we should have always adhered to and how we get there today I don't know I think it's just through communication and through the empowerment and supervision of our Heavenly Father's Divine Holy Spirit. There's no other way to get there. See, where there's unity, the, the blessing is commanded. And, but you say, well, where are the, you know, where are the miracles? And we say, well, can you expect to be endorsed with that kind of power when we run around and we carry on like selfish prats? And there's no real sin. No real sincerity. We actually, you know, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between a New Age Pentecostal Christian and, and a non-believer. The gifts and the talents that you have that bring about your income, you know, they were there for the ability to bring in, to share, to help those that, for whatever reason, are downtrodden and struggling in life. Unity is where it's at, it always has been. Father, I pray that they would be unified. Father, I pray that You would, you would do something maybe it's the shaking that will do it will, will, will be one that will have to be strip us bare of our addictions things that we've grown addicted to force us to deal with the core truths. Well, there's only going to be one way to find out, isn't there? Praise you God.